The last video in the series showed you how to create brand new pages for your application. Now let's talk about configuring the menu so that operators can find and open those pages. Now, as you might expect, there's more than one way to do things. The menu is configured using the tag browser. Menu contents are stored as a, a type of tag we call a menu item tag. Let's take a look at it. If I go to my home menu within the Idea Studio, or if I simply open the tag browser directly from the, uh, the main screen, either method is going to take me to the tag browser, but with this way of getting at it, I'm going to start immediately in a submenu where the pages are laid out. So in both cases, we're in the tag browser, but your pages and your menu for the pages are stored here within this page menu structure. Now, be careful here. You are allowed to change any menu item tag you want, and you can reorganize anything at all. But if you just start deleting and move things around without paying too much attention to the design of your menu, it is very, very easy to remove something that you could find yourself wanting later on. Especially true because your palettes are also stored as menu item tags. So everything that you see within the widgets, images, and shapes palette is only visible in the Idea Studio because here within the menus, under the drawing tools, I've got all of the menu items making up the contents of the widgets, images, and shapes palettes. Now, you can't simply create a new folder here and add a new palette. But what you can do is in the page menu, have as many folders as you would like. For example, let's just close this for a moment and take a look at a menu. So in menu navigation, I've got two different ways of navigating. One is that I can open up a, a list with the, the text names of all of the pages. So this allows me to go directly to any page that I like. Also, I've got these submenus. So these are stored within folders. Now, if instead of using the text menu, if I click on this tiled version, so the page menu tiles, this will always have exactly the same structure as the list menu, but it looks a lot different. So within the page menu, I can see all three pages that were at the, the top level of the menu structure, overview, page one, page two, in the order that you see them in this list. And I have these folders. So I've got a folder for alarms, reports, and diagnostics. That's this folder right here. And if I click on that folder, I will see all of the pages that are menu items that are stored there. So backing up one step, if I want to create a brand new folder, perhaps to store page one and page two, I can do that by opening up the tag browser menus. Let's just go directly here because that was the last menu we, or sorry, folder within the, uh, the tag tree that we used. I'm still here when I came back directly from the tag browser. So within the page menu, I can see that I have all of these folders and all of these individual pages and show children is currently turned on. So I'm browsing down into all of them. Let's turn that off and just look at one folder contents at a time. So this is the top level of the menu structure. I'm going to right click on page menu, create a new child tag, and this will only give me a selection of menu item tags that are appropriate to be put inside of a page menu. So I can add a, a new page directly here or a folder. I could also add a, a divider. Now, a divider simply shows up as a little marker inside the list. Let's just move that up a couple steps. And if you want to see what that looks like, I don't have to close a thing. I can go right here to my menu, and there is an example of that divider that I placed right here between page one and the overview page. And did you notice how I moved that around? If I tell it to move down a step and reopen the page, this is how you can control the order of the entries within your menus. So we can't drag them up and down, 
we use these move up and move down buttons to change the order of where the, uh, the pages are in the menu. Okay, now continuing, let's just go back to my page menu, create a brand new menu item. This time I'm going to create a folder to store page one and page two in. So it wants a title for the folder. Put in any title that makes sense for what you're creating. The contents will be pages. And if you wanted, you could create your own thumbnail, but better to just let this take care of itself. And what will happen is it will give you a preview of the pages that you will eventually put into the folder. Click on OK, and there is my folder. Now, to move pages, what I do is cut and paste. So I'm going to cut page one, and then right click on new folder, and paste this as a child. It will give me a note that I might need to update uh, references. That's not going to be true for most of your menu item tags. Generally, what it means here is if you have custom code. So if you have written expressions, we haven't talked at all about doing that yet. So at this stage of the game, you can confidently click on, yep, that's fine. I am sure I want to move this tag. And now inside new folder, I can see I have page one. Clicking on the page menu, it's been cut from here and moved down. Now I don't have to cut. I could simply right click on new folder, say that I want to add a new child, and choose page. And this will allow me to choose from all of the pages in the entire application of which one do I want to add as a child to this folder. So we'll put page two in here. Okay, and okay. And now my folder contains these two pages. Let's take a look at how that's turning out. So here I can see my new folder has now been added to my page menu. Click to open that. And now I have a preview of both page one and page two within this folder, which is a very nice thing for the operators because it gives them the ability to monitor two pages at the same time without, well, you can, you can have these up to four, five, six, however many you want, but at some point, if there's too much graphics going on in the screen, VT Skater will say, well, we can no longer keep a live view, so we'll take a snapshot. So where you see a snapshot image, that's telling you that it, it took a picture of the page and it's just showing you a static picture rather than, in this case, the live view of the page. Now, there's another way of doing the whole thing, as you might expect, which is that directly in, from inside this, this tiled page view, I can right click on any page. And the first thing I can do is to open it, or I can do things like cut and copy, delete, no, not deleting the page, just deleting the menu item tag, which is what makes it show up in the menu. Or I can create new, or I could change the properties. I could change the name in the menu. So one page, if I'm going to open it in two places, there might be a reason, and in fact, you'll see one in a later video, why you might want it to have a different name in one place in the menu than somewhere else. But let's just go back up one step or even stay here. If I say new, I can add a third page to this current folder, and perhaps I'll add my dashboard. Dashboard one will now be a new page within my, my folder and voila. So you have the ability to edit your menu both within the tag browser and directly with right clicks while working in the pages. If I wanted to work in a different folder, I simply navigate back up to the top level and I can add new pages and folders here or I can add them as submenus. So the navigation for your application is completely under your control, and it's all done through these tags known as the menu item tag.